Welcome back, everybody. Before we touch on this next matchup, I hear Jamada has been hunting on Twitter. For no, 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 no. Bring up the teams. Oh, bring up the teams. We're not going to talk boo. about it now. It's all right. Look, hey. Another lime, another time. Instead, another we'll talk time. about Eminem and Viperio. All so right. Disappointed here. Tell me about this, Jamada. Yeah. So, you know, after yesterday, I'm excited to see how Eminem come out because, you know, manhandling resolve is no, you know, small feat. And for Viperio, you know, pre-split expectations, again, like any other UKL team, especially because of the nature of how they made it into the UKLC, you're, you're kind of just expecting, like, hey, probably near relegations, but at the so, moment, they've got three wins for their name, right? So three and two is nothing to be upset about. And I think after this Eminem game, I think the next matchup is Lucent. I don't have the cheat sheet up, so I actually can't double check that one. Uh, but, you know, Losing here wouldn't even be that terrible because then you still got the one and five team. Yes, they just picked up a win and it looked mm -hmm. very convincing into a uh, resolve, but you can still, you know, hold your head up high uh, if you walk away with a loss here. But challenging Eminem will definitely be a statement for the other just promoted UK ELT. Absolutely, of course. They did drop a game yesterday. They kind of had their strategy of get Kum Kum on the jinx and run away with the game. Kind of exposed a little bit and my unfortunate, my, so my prediction for Eminem on this game was partly because I said, well, they took down Resolve Academy yesterday, they looked really aggressive doing it, really convincing doing it, and it's also just this addition of like, well, what happens then if you can shut down Viperio's bot lane? What happens then? And see whether potentially Eminem can return that favor, whether Viperio have got a few more tricks up their sleeve. Still, a few bands we said come through, unsurprisingly Gwen's among those for Viperio, and then aside that set, that Nocturne, big tickets as you mentioned already. Yeah, and you know, I think what's been really one of the more impressive factors about Eminem is their ability to execute on some slightly harder compositions on paper, and particularly when it comes to shutting down bottom lanes. You know, they shut down the, uh, the bottom side of Uli Wonka, Billy Wonka, uh, very funny names, I know. Uh, and they've consistently done it, they did it yesterday uh, in to make you an FGG as well. So, you know, this isn't really outside of the comfort zone of Eminem to play aggressively into one side of the map. And if it is to shut down Kum Kum and Haas, then for me, who on Viperio is necessarily going to stand up? I think that, you know, Topi on certain picks when he is left uncontested certainly can keep Viperio sure. afloat. And Johnny Rico, you know, we've spoken about on a very consistent basis as being Absolutely. a very, very strong jungler uh, and a very consistent mm -hmm. jungler, I think is the key thing. Absolutely. Uh, you know, top side can keep them afloat, but if Eminem just overbear the pressure, how can they actually retaliate? Absolutely, and you know, key to that potentially is getting rid of things like Hass's infamous Thresh. It does prevent easy access to things like the Jinx as a pairing alongside it. And so instead, they just go, well, we want to make sure we have a very strong matchup, whatever may come in bot side. So they pick up Varus. So many build paths, Prowler's Claw on him, particularly going for the lethality option, also pretty strong. Got to see what they'll pair that up with. Uh, they've still got five seconds to make their decision here. Choices. Yeah, I think an aggressive jungler when you've got Varus is definitely a, a smart choice. And now I wonder if we'll see Zin Zhao as the response mm. uh, from Gudanika just to match the aggression. Yes, you've got the Rumble up. And yes, there is the Varus with the Thresh Bandy is going to be very immobile and, you know, vulnerable to some of these engages. But knowing Gudanika, he likes to be aggressive in the early games. Yes, he he wants to match jungle aggression uh, from the opposite side. So I wouldn't be too surprised to see it left in there. What you a go. surprise. There it is. And now I'm thinking about the AD carry roll. I was oh, gonna. Th I oh, didn't want to throw oh. out something like Samira. I was thinking about yes. the Callista again, but the thing with the Callista is it can actually be matched in lane prowess to the Varus. Now, something that can shut down the Varus is the Samira when it's got a really aggressive jungle uh, plus support matchup. So, mm -hmm. very excited to see something like Samira come out from Joppa. He's been a very explosive AD carry player. And now over to Viperio, I think you lock in the support now and you ban out two counters. I think it's the best way to try and shut down this Samira. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to lock in this Nautilus. And now I think. You know, you move away something like the Braum, you've got a Zinzal who, who attacks a lot as well. You can stack up the concussive blows mm -hmm. way too easily, in my opinion, uh, yep. on this bottom side. And then maybe you look towards the Leona for that sort of like diving threat. And I think those will be the two bands from Iperia if they've got the head on straight for Eminem. Kick of the litter, really, they're actually looking at a Rail ban, which I think okay. I if we was on patch 11.4, that would be a fine ban, but... Uh, Let's see, Trindamir actually. Trindamir, Trindamir mid, mid off the just a little bit of things. After Topi's uh, performance, you kind of understand that it was very, very interesting to that. deal with. Yeah. Don't want to deal with it. It's just one of those things you don't practice against it in competitive nope. things. So just get rid of it. And Absolutely. I mean, for Viper, one of the, the aforementioned picks before, I think still makes sense in the slot. Uh, something that can stop dive, uh, I think is the name of the game. As time ticks down, 
it's actually going to be another oh, respect back. Okay. Okay. So Jamada, you, they didn't have their heads on straight. No. For me, I think you. I understand the LeBlanc ban when there's not a crazy amount of easy to sort of lock down the LeBlanc uh, CC tools. When she goes in, she can very easily react to it with her own uh, distort back out. But I don't know, man. I, I'm not too sold on the on the on the second phase of the Viperio bans. I'll put it that way. I think there's still going to be plenty of aggressive options for Vango if he wants to go down the aggressive route. Uh, if the LeBlanc ban was because they actually lock in the Nivea, then I don't really know what to say. Uh, They've done it. Well, okay, a lot of control. You can put the yeah. walls down, which uh, can make things a bit tricky. Please lock in, Evelyn. I would forever love you, Gadunica. Put that Jinzao somewhere else. It's fine. I don't play that champion. Have, I don't oh, come on, come on just, let me dream here. Sam, look. All right, I'll let you dream for the next eight seconds. Like you're gonna be <laughs> Very Leona. short dream. They're gonna lock in Leona, so just don't. Okay. Don't Very, what do you know? <laughs> right. uh, and now, Karma in one of these solo lanes. I think probably going into Aragorn's hands unless they want to mash the, the wave clear in the mid lane. But I think Karma can be very vulnerable to an Anivia. So I'm expecting something a little more mobile in the mid lane, perhaps. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure what something like Silas can fit, fit that profile, and you've got a very powerful Olmos to steal away. So uh, not not averse to this lock in here. Depth from Eminem, charge, it, it chains of corruption, a Stormbringer, even honestly the Anivia ult. Anivia ult could be a pretty bad yeah, can be can yeah, be really be nasty as well. Situation. So you know, I think when you talk about Eminem as being this heavy early game skirmish in team comp, Silas fits that profile really really well. And now for the top lane. Maybe something like an Orn, like an aggressive, like Malphite pick even could be really good. Something that can go in uh, with the Volley Bear uh, would definitely be it. But they want to actually weak side with the Lee Sin potentially uh, in that front. So we'll have to see, because when you see Varus and Lee on the same team, typically it's like, okay, Lee Sin wave clears. You just, you know, try and roam if you can uh, in the laning phase. You just scale up, get the Iron Spike whip, and then, you know, you look to make plays in the later stages of the game because you want to put resources into the Varus lane uh, as opposed to the top side. And I think. For Eminem, when you've got this scaling utility mage in the top side, you're not too fussed about that. So I'm looking towards the mid and the bottom lane for a really explosive action. You've got Samira and Leona on one side, you've got Varus plus the New Orleans on the other side. There's so much damage. And then when you chuck a oh, Zinzao yeah. and a Volley Bear into the mix, it just gets all the worse. I mean, effectively, when Eminem group up and then Aragon is going to put that Defiance, the Mantra E, Jinzao, Silas, Samira, Leona being sped up to dive into your team and press R sounds pretty damn terrifying and i am a little nervous with topi who has picked up the anivia of course the egg is a thing to try and keep you safe but there's a lot of tools to scramble that egg in this squad for uh, eminem yeah oh god you just you just made me remember the chimera tweet man because of <laughs> the nivia and eggs and ah <laughs> oh, now i'm now i'm now i'm in a distressed mood i i sam I'm sorry. come on no i'm sorry no, i distressed you with the evelyn hover earlier it's getting worse i'm sorry man yeah, that's why no, i'm not it, on regularly it's, it's, <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no, dude, it's been a pleasure and you've been killing it so far. So, thank you, thank you. you know, happy to have you here. But yeah, uh, like you say, lots of tools for uh, for Eminem to sort of, you know, get on top of this Anivia. I will say if, and it's a relatively big if, if we can see Viperio, you know, lock down areas of the map where they can have very controlled vision and Eminem want to aggress into these areas and then all of a sudden they've got to worry about the glacial storms, the walls, lawless hooks, all of these things. It can get difficult for Eminem to, you know, move forward because I don't necessarily mm -hmm. feel like the wave clear uh, is, you know, something that's very prominent on this Eminem uh, draft. But that being said, Eminem don't like to play games slowly. And no. often or not, they can even go as far as just straight up disrespecting Vision just because they work off of information where it's like, OK, we think this person's here, here and here. So we're just going to attack this place and hope it works out. <laughs> As uh, we're onto the rift for game three of the day, super excited to see how both these teams match up. I want to know if my hero can really try and stand up like their UK L brothers just did to resolve Cadam. Oh, absolutely, and that is the question, isn't it? Can they do so? Because M and M have all the tools to run at you real fast and make things very difficult for whoever they decide to jump on. That said, you kind of called it already, you know, like. Between an Anivia and a Varus, that's a lot of ranged zone control. Like, you can throw out arrows from miles away, the Glacier Storm, the walls, all of that jazz. Like, if Eminem just have to sit there and take the abuse or get far enough behind that if they, they dive in and they just don't have the stats to, to kill people off, then they could be in trouble if they don't get enough of a lead to do that. Yep, certainly so. I do agree. And I think that is always going to be the trade-offs between when you have sure. drafts like this, where... You know, it's not so heavy in the scaling department. It's not like it's going to fall off a cliff. You've got the, mm -hmm. uh, you've got this karma to try and sort of alleviate some of that pain. You've 
also even got, you know, Silas scales pretty well. Pretty well, does yeah, depend on does. some of the ultimates uh, in mm -hmm. the game, and Samira Some obviously ones. more of a mid game base AD carry, but if left unchecked, like any other AD carry in the game, she is going to deal a tremendous amount of damage. So uh, we'll have to see. But like you say, uh, it's going to depend on things like the virus build, how much control this Indivia is allowed to have. Because honestly, I look over to the Viperio side and I say, it's it's pretty early game heavy too. It's not like it's yeah, a yeah. late game based composition. Volley Bear's so. notoriously early game, right? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I know for at least pre some of the slight changes. I mean, effectively, you hit one item and fell off a cliff. Like in jungle particularly, of course, where you didn't have the same gold income. So got to keep our eyes on what Johnny Rico and Kadunika get going early on. They've definitely got the pools and the lanes to set up. Hail of Blades is the choice for Kum Kum as well, which is definitely suggesting to me a, a lethality option, but it could be some could be just looking for the lane pressure as well, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, no other crazy keystones I'm seeing right here to keep an eye on is uh, Hassan Lance, pretty big early hurt and Joffa. Taken pretty low from that. Nice little hail of arrows to turn around some of that damage and good lane control on that level two hit from Viperia. Yeah, and it's going to be pretty impactful. Pop blown. I uh, don't think there's biscuits in the inventory of Joppa, unless he immediately ate them on the trade. And Possible. Get to I didn't see any of them myself, actually. And uh, that's going to be a relatively big advantage because Kum Kum has not only a pot, but a biscuit as well. So as time goes on, uh, some of the range discrepancy can certainly show up and can start to become a bit of a pain in the backside. But oh. for now, it looks like Johnny Rico on this volley bear is not necessarily passing down towards one side, just waiting for the skull. Gudanika going to come off this chicken camp kind of soon, but could be a bit late to the Skullcrab party and doesn't have mid lane priority, but does have top lane priority. So he's going to move up towards the top side instead. And this wave is pretty big. Doesn't seem like Viperia interested in making a dive happen on this wave though, because Johnny Rico, Skullcrab, definitely the more important thing here. For what the Volley Bear will pick that one up. Yeah, it's on level four. And you can see over on the minimap, Zorga Tunica did do exactly what you said. Move towards the top side, Skullcrab and gets a hold of it. Teleport back in from Vango. Kajunika is around, but I think it would be a little bold to go in. Boost is done. And actually, look yeah, who's around. Kajunika's there. He's going to go down with the egg pretty quick. He actually flashed over the wall to survive for now. But look, Leona's roaming up instead. Over the wall goes Hass. Kajunika flashing out. Got the ignite taking. But can they find enough damage? Great wall! Oh. Toby, what was <gasps> that? That was sick. Vango still alive by an no. Come on, the spice bits are not quite enough. How is everybody alive? How did everybody live? And even you can see on the bottom side of the map, clocks just turned around before the Play was done. He didn't think anything else was going to happen, so he just left. <laughs> well, that is mid laner and jungler are probably doomed. Oh, I thought after that wall it was a done deal. Hell, I thought after the initial wraparound gang it was a done deal, but just turn around to turn around and everyone and gets out. Oh, Van Gogh's so <laughs> close to taking down Topi on the initial oh. engage. Doesn't blow the egg, and then the wall comes back in. You can see the angle keeps Van Gogh in place. It actually auto passed him back into Johnny Rico. Oh. I'll say, I think, because of just where he might have been specifically clicking. The Storm doesn't come down with Vango either, so it doesn't get him the execute. That was something, and we're left very, very close to someone going down. But somehow, someway, everyone's alive. Just shy a fair amount of summoners, and of course, uh, Toby still even had the egg to work with there, so perhaps not quite as close as you would have thought as well. So, um, by a lot burn, Kajunika's first gank not working out as well as he might have liked, but both junglers without flashes, both mid laners without flashes, has I mean, without a flash. If you want to a think lot about for both it, people to work around. If you want to think about it like this, his thumb, his his gank actually blew one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> what is the, on it, their team as well? But yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. Because <laughs> oh, the only blew right. the flash, and Vango yeah, yeah, blew yeah. the flash. Of course, you're actually. <laughs> all... <laughs> you're right. I'm a, a, a play by play brain. Oh, flash yeah, is the only summon as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, I am so, a uh, smart man with a master's degree. I really am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, uh, sometimes education can't save you from brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm going to take that as the backhand handed compliment it, it was and move on. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, Vango, a little aggressive here, but he's got the wave shoved in the wall. Oh, what a long way up. Ellie. That wall nearly caught uh, him. He's walking into this. Oh, it's a disaster. Sky's better come through. Walking. Can he get over the wall? Decent healing, but the stun from downtown. Yeah. That's the snowball from hell. Johnny Rico gets first blood. Viperio off to a great start. Yeah, just a curious decision from Van Gogh, in my opinion. You've got vision on the top side, not oh, the bottom side, but I'm going to have to hold that. Engage on the bottom side, and Volibear's in the area. Yeah, Kajunika to walk up. They're going to think about going and 
Jopa went in, had the blade well, but it's now pop. Does, of course, have himself an S rank rating, but no level six to pull the Inferno Trigger. Instead, the turnaround from Hass going in, but he's so low! Just gets taken out, but now the hit oh. turns going really low. It's two already. Double kill for Samira. Oh, that's a disaster. Oh, no. Wild he's rush. He's back in. in, keeps going. Reset City, kiddo, and it's Topi who goes down in oh, the egg, and no. Samira, it might not be candy, but the space moves enough. Sheen is in, tries to get something, but he's too late. Topi is dead. Look at that! Mango gets that as well! Shieda is done! And Viperio throw it all away on a re-engage. It's a it's actually a delayed ace from Eminem. Five is out one. of his mind for going in there, but he makes it work. Kadonica plays the sacrificial lamb in this one, but at the end of the day, when your team picks up five kills for it, I think you can be happy. Aragon also TP's down. I didn't actually quite see where we'll get the replay of it. And it's Kadonika spots out Johnny Rico. He sees in a bit of a poor position. He gets hooked in, as you can see here. And he just says, screw it. I'm just going to commit. So does Fox as well on the engage. And Joppa just dashing, gets the initial double kill, dashing through, dashing through. No one actually has the burst to take him down. The S rank with all the Conqueror stacks just gives him so much AD. It means the retaliation isn't really great. It's actually teleport right in front of the members here of Eminem. Oh. The shields does help Klaus catch up. Stun as well onto Shida with the knockup means Van Gogh picks up that one. What, an, what a turn of play I know. from Eminem. And I mean, it's the bottom lane again, okay. which we've credited so frequently. Uh, Joppa and Clock, definitely one of the better performing, or the best performing realistically, uh, AD support here. Just brilliant turnaround all in all. Absolutely. And, you know, and credit again, because right now, Kumkin still has Flash, still has Cleanse, didn't get a chance, literally deleted and Clocks. Has an angle here with the support Adelaide. He's going to hex flash over the wall and yeah. force the flash from Doom Doom in turn. That's a worthy trade. Certainly be very, very happy about that. And now, Kum Kum only working with the cleanse. It's not the most uh, aggressive game of League of Legends, let's say, that we've seen from Eminem more like well executed in terms of a pre sort of planned sort of setting. But honestly, the responses have been great. Viperio, they tried to be pretty proactive in their own rights and it's not quite worked out so far as that uh, okay. oh, got taken a little over there but steals away <laughs> the uh anivia roll i'm not sure how many procs of that you actually get interestingly coon coon stunned in place with the soul of flair but has the cleanse to get out but now has is left in trouble Johnny Rico's coming in but i don't know what they want that the crescent guard comes out flash over the wall from has gets them to safety Someone is burned and Eminem now takes back away. Joker blocks a lot there with the blade. Well, still Hass goes in. That might have been a mistake. Still alive, but Kadunika audaciously charges forward. Oh, but this Bango. time it's Viperio who are going to chase down Eminem, who've gone a little deep themselves. Flash for the thundering smash. And down comes the Sky Split. The Bango has got a fair amount of healing. He's got a blast that he can try and get to, but he's surrounded by three. And Kum Kum gets to kill themselves. Yeah, this is the kind of untempered aggression we've spoken about a little bit that sometimes comes out of Eminem. You can, you know, they're a rowdy bunch and it's, enjoy That's it's enjoyable to watch. But when you've got a lead, you don't necessarily want to throw it away in ways like this. Make games closer than they have to be. Now, it's just another example of that. Uh, they go a little bit too deep. They get re-engaged onto those three members and at the back of it and they only pick up one. Look. All I'm saying is a champion with flair in the game, and one way or another, it was always going to be a little over the top. And we've already got 11 kills at 9, nearly 10 minutes. So I'm pretty happy, frankly. I just just wiped the blood off my screen, and I'm good to go. <laughs> I like that one as uh, Eminem saying, don't really care about this dragon. The Herald, more important, gives us all of the gold injection, and I imagine it's going to go into the bottom side at some point, or more, more accurately, into Yoppa, who is on the top side of the map at the moment so uh wave stacks but it's not it's not a huge one you won't necessarily see it dropped on this wave but you can see viperio they've come to rotate over when rico approaching but not going to get too aggressive doesn't really have any members and you can see the rotation coming up from oh eminem boy, four man already go. he's got kum kum around but slow by the soul of flair knocked up kum uh, so van Gogh's stolen kum kum's ultimate the chain of corruption comes through but there's a sky splitter there to give johnny rico the shield he needs and he gets out but now van Gogh a little bit low Needs to be perhaps a touch afraid. Piercing arrow comes through. It's not empowered by the blighted stacks. He doesn't land either. Vergiru here to defend their tower. Pass with a book that was very close to landing, but uh, we won't get another bloodbath quite yet. No, not just yet. And you can even see top laners rotating up to the top side uh, in anticipation of that fight. As Aragon eats up the mid wave, and now Sheeta's going to force him back down to the bottom side. 
I'm gonna get back to these, you know, bot versus bot, mid versus mid, and top versus top lane assignments. Uh, she might actually pick up a plate for himself. Uh, Does so. Uh, nice clear of the wave there with the soul flare from Aragon. Might take a sonic wave of face in trade, but it would be a bold call to go in there back under tower from Shader and decides probably wisely not to do that. And uh, 11 minutes into the game, we are a hundred gold apart, one kill apart, and a game that could still go either way. Yeah, definitely so. And we said the scaling isn't really like heavily favored in one way or the other. No. Uh, so honestly, could definitely be a uh, bit of a bloodbath until one Nexus is just destroyed. Wow. As Herald, top side, going into drop up, no surprises here. First turret, 110 all gold, mates. first turret, yeah, all the plates. As Injection only sends them about 1,000 gold up, but you can see the gold difference between Joppa uh, and Tomb Tomb accelerate you know, just under 2,000 gold. Nice name yeah. game. Across the board, though, you can see uh, Topi actually is up 1,000 gold over Van Gogh and in the top wow. side. Gold. That's a lot, actually. Yeah, it is a lot. It is a lot. And, uh, only other noticeable gold lead in the support roles, but <laughs> not the most, and you know, not the most. Yes, the Yoda tank. Yeah, she's already got Eclipse, so you know that's always a point to keep an eye on. Um, you're right. Probably not the most impactful. Uh, also worth noting as well, just before we do move on, that while all the shenanigans, namely the Herald, being dropped in the top side was occurring, Viper did secure himself the first place of the game. Which is a drop yeah. So it is a pretty late dragon though, so it's not like the is gonna be bearing down on. Uh, Eminem by so you know the 25 23 minute mark as a 12 minute dragon so at earliest I'm gonna get 32 minutes soul uh, assuming the dragons are taken on cooldown yeah and then like when that goes on to a smear who's literally got 2k gold ahead as well yeah. because of that the turret plate top side yeah late first dragon versus first turret all plates onto already fed Samira I know which one I would take uh, I'm not a very good League of Legends player, so that probably tells you a lot about uh, <laughs> how good a player that was in some ways. Definitely so. As a uh, place is going to be dropping off soon, I don't think anyone's going to be able to force oh. out oh. anything too heavily as our old Flash Frost after. That's so much damage! Forced the Flash out. He empowered there just to so much work. Ugh. Frostbite indeed. He's going to have lost a few fingers there, Mango. Uh, deceptive amount of damage, but I mean, you've got the uh, magic pen boots, you've got the sork shoes, got the lost chapter, a lot of AP uh, in his inventory well. already. Yeah. And uh, it just makes Mango's life a lot harder. He's two levels down, a lot of XP down. So if he's even going to pick up this blue buster, that's going to be uh, a lead to exaggerate even further. So Eminem, they're going to have to be very cautious of this Anivia. It's going to have to be her that gets focused down over anyone else, but. Let's see how they handle it. Hase could face check this and potentially die. He DP does down as well. indeed. A good flash away. Don't quite channel the CC well enough. He does manage to escape just in that single frame. He's been hammering on that flash. He does manage to get his way out of danger. Teleport burned. Not a lot of game from Eminem outside of the flash. Flash. Maybe a though. Well. Oh, Opie. this is fine. The moat comes out and it's really not nice. Flash away though. Gajunica has got the wind becomes like oh. trying to get it in. Flashes over the wall. Gajunica has the crescent guard popped as well. But now Topi gets a good crystallized. But Aragon in a difficult position. Final kick lands. The Q goes in. Shieda gets the karma. And Aragon, what are you without your dragon? I tell you. you Should have picked another one. <laughs> That's a great fight, by the way. The observer agrees. As a, yeah, play again goes awry in the mid lane uh, for Eminem and honestly UKL or XUKL teams rather showing up pretty big today. I turn up bringing for UKL it to Eminem. and look at it, you know, this is it. Yeah. I'm, I'm currently the lucky charm. What do you know? Uh, a lot of other teams going to be telling me not to come back at this point, I'll tell you. <laughs> Get a really angry message from someone called Eminem later. Uh, it's, it's not over yet. It's check still the schedule. Six six. <laughs> Are we playing my pure or Lucid today? <laughs> Who's casting? Who's casting? I need to know. <laughs> You've heard of cast of curses. I'm just saying, they're a real thing, guys. We don't tell you too much about them, but they're, they're around about. Johnny Rico hanging around mid. And Van Gogh with a uh, corruption, I believe. And everything just goes in. There's going to be a, a resurrection needed, but he just dies anyway. Gatunik is going to go and try it again with his audacious charge. Does get the shutdown on oh, 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 Johnny, Rico. Johnny Rico is in danger. And he, oh. he's going to go low, but the turnaround gets a double. He's alive. Oh. What the hell? Finally get it back, Aragorn gets that, but it's too late. The tower shot gets him as well. And it's a three for two disaster for Eminem. 
yeah, the shield he comes out from Cheetah. A massive heal with the Vine Thunderer plus a, another wall from Johnny Rico, I believe. Which means he survives so much longer. The Storm bring a shield too. Or the Sky Splitter are the shield. It just means Guy just doesn't die. <laughs> Long enough, stays alive. Able to basically turn what should have been a relatively clean 2-1 to a 2-3 trade. That means that people have to overextend underneath the tower to take down the big uh, polar bear. There we go. <laughs> I was looking for it. Not there, though. I mean, polar bears are pretty damn scary. And especially when one's like, you know, like literally a god of like, what? Lightning. Storms? Like, yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, whatever. You know, it's, 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 like, it's, it's also like the sort of like Four Cthulhu bear. horror, the Cthulhu <laughs> horror skin as well. It's like, all right, that's pretty terrifying to have charging at you. I, I wouldn't be happy, that's for sure. Four bar bear is the uh, way I put it. <laughs> is uh, Eminem there sitting in front of this dragon? Given the posturing from Viperio, it doesn't look like they have much interest in this one. Think about uh, the Herald, instead. The Herald instead. Yeah. But honestly, I think it's probably okay. Second, second Herald, uh, normally used as a means of securing priority for the next dragon. But you can see by the timer of it, uh, depending on how quickly Johnny Rico picks it up. Uh, it's actually going to be despawning the uh, Herald timer before the dragon spawns, so it's going to have to be used in a pretty peculiar manner if they want to secure priority somewhere on the map around that dragon spawn. Or, uh, more accurately, typically they're used after fights. Mm. Is how second heralds are normally uh, try and get the big win and then use the herald to get as much out of it as you can. Especially with the turret plates down on there as well to, to add all those extra resistances and. We're left in a very, very even game state. Uh, now back to literally even gold. It's the additional tower to Eminem, the difference. Otherwise, it's a kill advantage to Viperio, but one Drake apiece, one Herald apiece. Lot for both teams to work with here, even if I feel like some of the last couple fights have been more Viperio edged, particularly around the mid lane. Certainly so. And again, Anivia sort of silently scaling now with the last couple of minutes as uh, Van Gogh looks like to see another four trade might have been uh, on the way out uh, off the wave pretty but rough indeed it, he flashed actually oh, oh man, man. yeah he, back, there's yeah, a chrysalis so that came back. through yeah that's pretty nasty indeed uh, not quite sure how it happened because Unica is going to have to be the one who picks up this wave which is going to increase the, the CS discrepancy there oh. of course that's going to be the teleport back in probably from, from Van Gogh Teleport jungle only on fiddlesticks, I feel, and that, that's a bit not Don't forget Carpet. Uh, that's true. I keep forgetting you can do teleport you know, in the jungle. But don't forget as well, uh, it was SOFM, but he's a. Um, okay, yeah, but he's a, he's a, he's a mad kill. scientist. Like, he's yeah, the guy who he, runs he, he did it on a, so. He did it on Kane, I believe. Oh, well. we yeah, see yeah. that as well. Yeah, you've, okay, look, I was wrong. I take it back. Uh, you could run teleport in the jungle. Just do it in the right situation. Yeah. Uh, this is why I'm not the Gully uh, <laughs> But, you know, for all we're saying, ooh, Toby's looking pretty scary, we've not talked around Joppa in a while, and the CS discrepancy that's in mid is definitely mirrored in bot, because that is a two-item Samira, who has got themselves an immortal shield bow and a collector to their name. If they are given the opportunity to pull the Inferno trigger, a lot of kids could die. Yeah, certainly, but there are a lot of tools to actually interrupt uh, that Inferno trigger. So, true. Uh, Viperio are going to have to play around that quite well. As this is a 350 shutdown. They can pick up speed up here. He's going to try and do his best to outplay this. Oh. Does manage to safeguard out of no the solar flare. Just slightly overplayed. But Van Gogh just gets a dash forward and get it anyway. That's a big shutdown going towards the slightly beleaguered Silas. He'll be very happy to have picked up that additional goal. Yeah, and honestly, with the members sort of the air eyeing up the way they are this on the map. This is Eminem. Uh, this is a Baron and it's two item AD carries. The mirror might not be the fastest, but when you've got an, uh, a very far ahead, AD carry like this, you can make something like this happen. And Johnny Rico is only in the mid lane right now, but you can see it's a very slow Baron. They're not necessarily going to be able to burn it down right now. And so I fear they're going to look for the engage potentially. They thought about it, but you know, they do get Topi's TP and perhaps all they're really looking for in the end. They're going to summon Herald in mid, especially now the resets are coming through. So it might not be a fight with kill to fight all the same, and the Herald will summon after it. What do you know, Jumani? You might know a thing or two about this game. You used to get that mid lane still one. In the end, the kill on Shieda doesn't lead to the Baron, but I appreciate the uh, looking from Eminem. Yeah, certainly. As uh, not quite there on the burst. Uh, Joffa also had a lot of gold picked up the yes, three calls, so 
Uh, we'll have to see exactly how he can navigate this next fight at the Dragon. I assume MM will want to contest it. Uh, if they don't, then I think it makes sense too, just because if it is Vipira with first move into the river, talk about all of the choke control that Anivia can have. It can be very, very difficult advancing into that champion. Uh, and into a Pope Varus as well. So mm. uh, it wouldn't be the worst position in the world to drop this Dragon Eagle. No, really not. And with 50 seconds coming up, it, with the control that Vipira are not going to get because of the reset timings, it becomes pretty tricky to walk in there. You know, Anivia Varus, they've been mentioned. We'll talk about it again because, you know, uh, it's pretty powerful in the situation as we were just mentioning. And as it stands with the gold pretty much dead, even the only thing to fight for is the dragon. And I think Eminem saying eh, it's only the second dragon. It's literally 22 minutes into the game. We don't need to fight this. Instead, Vipira might be looking to catch somebody out here. What? Well, needs to be a bit afraid of walking in there. Maybe Eminem think this is their time to go. Okay. They're not here to begin with. In goes Gadunica with the audacious charge of the Gresson Guard. That's to be Shadow has to flash straight over the wall because of the attempt on the teleport. Flash down for both the top laner and the jungle. After both teams here ready to play. Vango over the back. He's got himself a depth charge in infantry to try and catch somebody out into the mid lane go Eminem looking to get priority and they will probably get this mid lane tier one with the wave in play it'll be in trade for the dragon and Viper might now look for the fight pass at the back end of it all now looking to the corral somebody clocks stepping forward gets the hook but look at the backside here clocks has got on top he's gone golden very early Joker's running and wild the Inferno trigger's being pulled and it's a double for the Samira she's Ripple. gonna get a triple to make it even more and the mercenary captain over from the Empire. There we go, Noxus. Picks herself up the triple with the coin at that one. Where's the fourth? I need to see it, Jordan. Yeah, and I mean, we said, Topi, this is the man to look at. On this Nivea, we have to see this Nivea get dropped in these team fights, or it's going to be very difficult. And then Joppa flashes forward, no flash on the Topi after the previous engagement from Gadonica. They're on the Baron right now. I think they should be able to execute it. There's no jungler on the enemy team. They're looking to maybe even take up a kill on the back He's side. got no flash that time. The solar flare is in time. He still managed to escape tanky enough with the Gordon and the Starex. Oh, Baron down to 2,000. Still Johnny Rico not here. He's respawned, but it's just not going to happen. Piercing arrow comes out, but it's too little. It's too late. Eminem finally find an advantage in this game after it's been neck and neck for 20 plus minutes. Let's go back to the mid lane and watch the Samira run wild. And you can see this mirror kind of untouched. You can see she ends up in the middle of it. And it's a great engage from Clocks. He knows who he's looking for. He's looking for the Anivia. And Vango on the flanker zone makes it even more possible. Gadanaka on the backside buys all the time he needs, forcing Kum Kum out of the flash as well. It just means there's not really much of a response oh, right here. And now Vango, Vango in the middle of it. He goes golden time by time. Clocks is coming up. He's pretty damn quick. He's going to go back in, and he clearly is more confident than we should have given credit for. The healing is just obscene with Kingslayer and the like. But Shieda comes back in, and it's a retrade again. Counter engage after counter engage into the crystallize from Anivia. Coom Coom slays to Palmer. It's going back one for one. Good job. He's on the back line again. He's not being stopped, and it's just going to be everybody going down for Quadra Kill. He's finally yeah. taken out. Shutdown goes the way of Sophie. But that is a very, very faint compromise that goes at the end of that fight. 9-2 and 5 is the Samira. I can't believe what I'm watching right now. Samira with this Infinity Edge and another BF Sword just tearing through health bars of Vipira. And, you know, we, we said there's a lot of tools available to Vipira to actually interrupt these ultimates, but they've just not really been able to on a consistent enough basis. They've taken or they've cracked open the base. They're going to also take this tier two on the bottom side. There's a lot of gold in swing here on to Eminem's about 6,000 gold lead now. All of a sudden, bloomed over the last couple of minutes. And Vipira, they're starting to fall apart here. It starts with this engage, just pretty audacious from yes. Bango, but you can see he's got the stopwatch. He buys enough time. He dodges out on the Sonic Wave as well, which is also, I think, pretty crucial here to his success. He's got the Chains of Corruption, uh, I think, actually, it's on cooldown, so it's just a bit of a visual bug there. But they can't burst down Hase, and this is where I think. Maybe this is an issue, but the Blade Royal actually blocks out on the stun initially, and that's why no one straight away dies. Oh, Look at Joppy, he's flashing forward. He doesn't care. No one can stop him that on the advance. Is, and I mean, uh, something. Look, something. I know she's based on Dante uh, from, of course, Devil May Cry, but never mind Devil's crying. I think all of Viperio is crying after that one. That was rough to watch. Inferno Trigger got pulled, and uh, yeah, Samira now at four. Oh, well, three, three and a half items, not quite four and a half items. I'm a little ahead of the game there, but uh, 
they're supposed to be tools to stop the Samira, but if you're using them all on Van Gogh, who's going in before him, uh, Samira does get to run wild, and it looks pretty nasty afterwards. Yeah, and um, this Phylus pick, uh, despite Van Gogh falling quite far behind in lane, uh, mm -hmm. as you know, you can see, he's confident he's picked up a mid <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and with all of the really strong ulmas he's got to steal away, in particular that depth charge is so oppressive when you've got the AP scaling on it. He's still finding so much use in these teamfights. He's got so much setup between the Abduct of Scum. Uh, I said that word wrong, but that's all right. And the Zonyas as well. He's just, he's just such a time buyer in these fights. And that's all he has to be if it means that Joppa gets to take over the fight with Aragorn, riding all the shielding and Gudanika also just disrupting the battle. And we kind of said, well, right, Eminem just basically press E on Carmen. Everybody dives in. If Van Gogh is, in fact, the vanguard to set everything up with the Everfrost, with the CC, with the stopwatch, or at this point, the uh, Zonya's Hourglass, then it gives Joba all the time they need. And yep, that's damage coming in from Samira. You can see where it's all coming from. Yeah, uh, 16,000 uh, damage on the chart right now. Varus. Basically, double make it 17,000. Yeah, double poke virus. That's, as, uh, that's something. Yeah. It's it's more about how the fights have played out and the fact that Kroom Kroom just hasn't been able to have the set up uh, to actually go for a lot of these poke. Uh, a lot of this poke has, all right, fight hards up. Vipero, they're looking to defend, but I really don't know if they've got what it takes oh, anymore. Engage that's comes forward. The solar Flare. In goes oh! Joppa. The Inferno Trigger is pulled. The style comes out. Big knockup from the depth charge. But now Joppa doesn't actually get all the kills they were looking for, but the health bars Ooh. are so low. Kroom Kroom has to back away. Shira goes oh. forward looking for something. Maybe he can get a kill, but that's so damn deep. You're one man alone. Tries to get something, but the shielding's too strong. And yeah. Shira, that was Lee Syndrome if I've ever seen it. Resurrecting his Topi. There will be no rebirth for the Cryo Phoenix. And Samira gets another multi kill onto the fountain and goes golden. The Vango will fall down, but it's still going to be Eminem who will move to uncontested first place into the UK LC Summer Split. Pass pulls themselves away to the inhibitor, but they can only watch on as their inhibitor falls. Wind becomes lightning. Katunika allows Samira to get her 13th kill of the game. Game ends at 28 and a half minutes. GG's and Eminem. Before we, you know, hype up Eminem again, uh, more specifically, not even really Eminem, Joppa uh, for his performance here and, you know, the team that came out. I think it's important to actually credit Viperio for keeping Seriously? that game competitive yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for such a long period of time. It just came down to that one team fight around that dragon where they blew the Anivia's flash and then they went for the re-engage Eminem. They baited Viperio into the mid lane after taking that dragon. They had the flank angle from Van Gogh and they took down the Anivia and Joppa just ran wild in that team fight. And from there, the snowball was just too real. They picked up the Baron and they just went with it. Fantastic. Well, we're going to cut to a quick break and when we come back, we'll even have an interview ready for you a little bit of discussion about the game with Vango, the victorious mid laner. So stick around and we'll be right back with that. Mom. 